Hi everyone, welcome to my review of the Faraday Brothers Dumb and Dumber from 1994. Yes, we are back once again, ready to discuss another comedy on the channel. This time around, going back to a film that I reviewed uh, many years ago and uh, you know, wanted to give this one another review and another discussion and uh, yeah, rewatched it very recently last week and uh, yeah, just wanted to share my opinions you know, on this film. Uh, you know, and I've, I've kind of um, got a different rating this time around as well and uh, yeah, just wanted to kind of give this one uh, another talk uh, since it was so long ago, as I say, that it was last talked about on the channel and uh, you know I just love this film so much as yes there will be a spoiler warning on this discussion if you haven't seen this film I simply recommend seeing it first and then come back to this video and uh, we can go from there we can talk about this film in the comments and uh, yeah discuss the Faraday Brothers, Jim Carrey, all this kind of stuff and so yeah with what I said let's discuss my thoughts on this film and uh, yeah what a film it is uh, this is just such a you know special film to me it's one that I've seen many times growing up uh, throughout my life and uh, you know since you know re-watching this film many many times and uh, yeah, obviously it's been Five years uh, since I'd last seen this film and, uh, you know, roughly, and, you know, I think just uh, seeing it again, it's just more of a realisation of just how much, you know, I love this film and, uh, you know, how much I've always loved this film uh, throughout my life and uh, how much it just means to me personally. And just seeing it again last week, uh, you know, it just uplifted me so, so much and, uh, yeah, it truly is a special film to me. And obviously, 94 is a massive year for Jim Carrey. We had Ace Ventura, The Mask and this film and uh, it just... Something else really, it launched his career and uh, yeah, it all <laughs> kind of went from there and uh, you know, this film though for me is my favourite of that year from him and uh, it's just a one that I've seen so many times and uh, yeah, it's just seeing these two together though, uh, you know, it's just, this is one of the best pairings that, you know, I think in cinema history and uh, you know, we have just um, perfect performances here, you know, kind of silly, um, childlike, uh, you know, bumbling characters um, but you know, there is this real uh, kind of connection they have and uh, you know, kind of emotional moments, dramatic moments, uh, you know, later on the film when things kind of go wrong for them and, uh, you know, they're kind of, you know, at odds with each other and, uh, you know, things go wrong, you know, with them getting to Aspen and uh, just, I think, um, the whole kind of journey of this is, is uplifting, it's, uh, you know, kind of inspiring and, uh, you know, feel good, um, but it is, you know, it's something that, it is quite, you know, kind of uh, touching as well. And I just love how as well we have a point in the film when, uh, you know, halfway through really, uh, when they kind of throw the briefcase uh, when they're kind of, um, you know, close to the end of, you know, they can't take it anymore, you know, in that sense, uh, you know, they're kind of feuding and uh, they've got, they're freezing cold and, uh, you know, of course, Harry kind of uh, throws uh, the briefcase and uh, it opens up, of course, and they see all the money inside. Obviously, this was the ransom money, uh, but, you know, it just, when they see this, uh, they think uh, we, we can just, you know, spend some and uh, just kind of uh, put in IOUs uh, back into it and, uh, you know, <laughs> In the end, uh, you know, the, the briefcase is uh, literally full of IOUs. They've used the entire, really, uh, you know, cash in you know, this, And it's just so funny um, and how ironic that is. And uh, just how at first uh, Lloyd is just desperate to kind of um, be kind of loyal to Mary and give this briefcase back. Uh, but then they do open it up and they see, when they see, you know, it's money, uh, you know, they kind of throw it, it opens up and they see it's money. Um, that's when things change for them. And uh, then we have this whole kind of um, way in which they become superstars. And uh, it's just... So, so funny, um, the kind of twists and turns of the film, the, the kind of act one, two, and three. Uh, first, we see these characters, and uh, they decide to, you know, a kind of introduction to the characters is perfect. Um, <laughs> just seeing, uh, you know, Mutt Cutts and uh, you know, Jeff Daniels, you know, playing this character perfectly, you know. Harry Dunn, and, uh, you know, this is kind of uh, the way in which he gives all these dogs food and, uh, you know, all the mustard and everything, it just goes all over the you know, inside of the car there, you know, in the kind of van and uh, all the dogs when they get out, you know, just the reaction, you know, on the owner's face and, uh, you know, just <laughs> everything that Harry, you know, says in this film is just uh, priceless and, uh, you know, as well, Jim Carrey, you know, kind of limo driver and, uh, you know, that's how he meets, obviously, Mary and, uh, you know, <laughs> just the moment when, you know, he's kind of saying, uh, you know, about the statistics, you know, of, um, accidents of course you know and stuff uh, in in planes and uh, he's not looking at what's happening and there's explosions of course uh, yeah, but behind him uh, you know or in front of him but behind his head uh, there when he's not looking and uh, <laughs> you know, good thinking uh, that line there you know it's just so so funny uh, but yeah the introduction to the characters is just perfect we get the tone straight away you know, and just get the, the kind of um, how these characters are you know individually and uh, then they kind of when they're back at you know the apartment uh, you know seeing them interact you know in their home and just you know, I love the kind of uh, the thread of, uh, you know, the worm store that they're going to be opening up, uh, of course, later on at some point. And just all the quirky traits of these characters and, uh, you know, just their, what their kind of their home is like and uh, just their kind of day-to-day um, -day life. It's just so, so funny, um, you know, their kind of uh, view on things and uh, it's just them together, you know, when they first uh, kind of, um, you know, walk back into the apartment. It's just so, so funny. It kind of soon unfolds from there when we have, obviously, Mental and, uh, you know, Shay coming into the film. They're kind of after the money, of course, um, 
the actual briefcase and they could tail them back to the apartment obviously and then the, the kind of irony of uh, you know them thinking that they're you know these pros in that sense and uh, you know because of just stuff that they've written of course you know like uh, you know saying you know the gas man obviously and, you know uh, Mike Starr in this film you know his reaction is, is great you know uh, mental you know kind of saying how do they know I had gas and uh, it's just all these things that are by accident and by the kind of uh, silly nature of uh, Harry and Lloyd, uh, things that they're saying and uh, making characters believe, um, that leads to all the things that happen throughout the film and it kind of all, all kind of uh, chains together, you could say, and uh, it leads to, um, you know, in the end, uh, everything kind of working out perfectly, uh, really, in a sense. Uh, they've got to spend all this money as well and uh, it's just, uh, you know, kind of go crazy with all this and, uh, you know, be superstars and, they, you know, the tuxedos, they have, you know, just this uh, kind of wild time and uh, Harry kind of, has this romance uh, in a sense uh, with, with Mary and uh, kind of has all this fun with her and of course it's just uh, the way in which this progresses. Um, first time seeing this you know I'd heard about this you know I got this on DVD uh, for my birthday one time and uh, just put it on and just you know kind of fell in love with this and uh, you know just uh, I didn't expect though uh, loads of things that happened in this film and uh, you know I saw the extended cuts uh, as I usually do and uh, you know it's quite a you know, it's, it's luckily quite a, you know, it's got a length to it in a sense for a comedy and, uh, you know, there's so much uh, kind of weight to this and so much packed into this film in that sense, a massive road trip film and, uh, you know, also just details throughout, you know, all the things that are, you know, very subtle moments, backstory, for example, exposition, you know, Fred Felcher, how that kind of uh, ties into um, the film later on and just everything that's said in this film means something really um, for the narrative and, uh, you know, as well we have some of the best physical comedy that I've seen and, uh, you know, just some of the best line deliveries. We have quite a lot of ad-lib moments in this film as well and uh, we have, uh, especially, I think, um, the best um, moment of this is probably when Harry Lloyd uh, and Mentor are kind of in the van there uh, driving and you have got, yeah, Mike Starr kind of in the middle there and uh, he's already been quite annoyed by these characters, you know, playing it, you know, back and forth while he's in the middle. They're kind of playing it, you know, and kind of uh, teasing each other, hitting each other while he's just sitting there, you know, kind of having to, you know, endure this. And just uh, then comes, of course, the moment when uh, Jim Carrey, uh, you know, of course, Lloyd says, you know, do you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? And uh, he just goes into it. That was ad-libbed and uh, you can actually kind of uh, very slightly see um, the, the reaction from uh, Jeff Daniels there is actually, you know, a genuine reaction there and uh, kind of, cutting quite quickly from that and it doesn't really matter because it's still kind of, you know, amazingly in character of, of um, you know, uh, kind of Harry's expressions, you know, in that sense of how he laughs in the film. Uh, so it's not something that you would really necessarily notice or, you know, kind of um, be aware of if you didn't know that kind of fact. Uh, but I think that's just great um, regardless of that, you know, because it does, um, you know, kind of uh, you know, just show how, how amazing, you know, some of the moments are, even though they're kind of just ad-libbed on the spot, they're spontaneous and, uh, you know, I think just, getting genuine reactions uh, as well as just uh, this stunning script uh, that's so well thought out, you know, Bobby and Peter Farrelly uh, writing this and, uh, you know, just so, so well, uh, you know, I think, and, uh, you know, it's just one of the best scripts really. The plot as well, just uh, the whole kind of, um, you know, mishaps and uh, the way in which it's just kind of, um, you know, a kind of a mistaken thing that happens. Briefcase is taken because Lloyd, you know, kind of uh, means so well and, uh, you know, kind of cares about Mary, kind of falls in love with her, you know, on the spot and, uh, you know, he kind of, he would do anything for her and uh, when he sees, obviously, the briefcase has been left, uh, you know, him thinking it's by accident, you know, the fact that he kind of takes it all the way to Aspen and, uh, you know, kind of all this uh, kind of uh, leads to so many different things going on throughout the narrative and uh, things happening along the way, uh, you know, I think that's just, so great. I just love how Nicholas as well, you know, he's involved in the film, in the narrative, uh, of course, Charles Rocket playing Nicholas and, uh, you know, it's just a great performance here, you know, so kind of charming and funny and, uh, you know, even though he's kind of a villain of the film and uh, he's involved in this whole kind of, uh, you know, ransom, uh, of course, money and everything that's been set up and, uh, you know, it's a real, you know, I think the way in which, it, you know, all the characters learn this in the end, you know, it's great, even though, yeah, before that, we, we as an audience for, for a lot longer than that uh, are aware of this and uh, where Nicholas is, you know, kind of a villain deep down and, uh, you know, he's kind of, you know, one of the criminals in that sense and, uh, you know, I think it's just uh, the way in which the final act, uh, you know, kind of, um, you know, culminates really and uh, all the kind of FBI agents as well. Uh, you know, the FBI agent that meets um, Harry especially, you know, along the way on the road, um, that kind of leads to the final act as well, you know, so everything all ties together so perfectly and I think the script, uh, you know, what's in the script and also the ad-libbed uh, moments, uh, you know, I think everything combines and uh, the way it's edited, of course, uh, to create, you know, one of the greatest uh, kind of uh, scripts, you know, in the comedy genre and, uh, you know, I think as well the editing here, you know, in terms of the kind of road trip feel, all the music that's used in this film, it's just 
Something Else is one of my favourite soundtracks, really. Just all of the songs that are used in this film, you know, Crash, uh, we have um, New Age Girl in this film as well, I love that, and uh, all the kind of iconic pieces from different films like uh, Pretty Woman, and uh, you know, as well, you know, I love uh, particularly um, Where I Find My Heaven, uh, you know, that's just the way these uh, songs are used, and uh, you know, in the film, and just in the context of what's going on with the characters here, uh, it's just, it's epic, it's uplifting, you know, it's kind of, um, there's tragic elements as well, you know, we have, uh, of course, Harry and Lloyd uh, kind of, you know, just for a moment, kind of uh, splitting up there, going their separate ways, and, uh, you know, obviously, very soon after that, immediately, really, um, they're back, and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, so I love the kind of friendship, uh, the kind of bond they have, and, uh, you know, it's kind of, they're up and down throughout the film, uh, but, you know, they're never really at a point where something could break them, and uh, it's just, it's so kind of um, uplifting, and, you know, magical to watch this, and, uh, you know, charming. And I also just love the dream sequences, or the kind of uh, way in which we get inside Lloyd's head at times as well, um, where he's just kind of imagining things, and uh, it's so fantastical, um, all of these sequences, uh, you know, especially the diner sequence, the fight, uh, with Jim Carrey and all the, the kind of guys there, and uh, it's just, it's quite violent, of course, and uh, brutal, uh, yeah, all these moments, just so fantastical, and it does kind of just play into, uh, you know, Lloyd's mind, and uh, the whole kind of film's got this childlike kind of um, silliness to it, and, uh, you know, I think just because these characters uh, are just so kind of bumbling and, uh, you know, kind of uh, silly and, uh, yeah, it's just, you get so invested in these characters, you know, kind of uh, love them so much uh, throughout the film and uh, every time I see this, at the end, it is quite sad to leave them and, uh, yeah, just seeing them walking down uh, the highway there after kind of refusing uh, <laughs> the of the women there, uh, that's just so funny and, uh, yeah, just when the music kicks in there and we see the credits kind of appearing and uh, then continue to walk down and, uh, you know, the highway and uh, just that really hopeful ending there, you know, I, just, I love so much, and uh, it's just such a warm ending, and uh, yeah, it's from start to finish, this film, it just, you know, has such a kind of um, a wacky idea, really, uh, you know, these characters are kind of taking this briefcase, uh, because, you know, just to return, you know, in person for some reason, you know, this briefcase to Mary, and um, yeah, just to, the whole kind of uh, fantastical nature of this, how kind of um, silly it is at times, and uh, it never kind of uh, loses the sense of uh, investment at all, and it's just perfect tone uh, that's established from the get-go, and um, the Farrelly's, you know, just run with that, you know, throughout the entire film, and uh, nothing kind of takes me out of the film at all, it's just complete perfection, uh, you know, throughout the entire runtime, and uh, all of the gags are just, in that sense, spot on, and, uh, you know, I think, um, yeah, road trip perfection, uh, you know, I think, kind of um, this dynamic duo of these characters and, uh, you know, just Jeff Daniels and Jim Carrey are just perfect in this film, you know, I think this for me is probably the best, yeah, uh, the best kind of comedic uh, performance from Jim Carrey and uh, it's my favourite Jeff Daniels performance as well, uh, these two together as well, just perfect chemistry and, um, yeah, I think these characters just kind of complement each other so well, even though they're kind of similar, um, they are quite unique as well and uh, just... Uh, reactions from Jeff Daniels uh, throughout the film and uh, just how they kind of, um, you know, interact. And just so many iconic sequences, you know, I can't talk about all of them, uh, but, you know, earlier on in the film, uh, we have the kind of sea bass uh, incident, of course, you know, in, in the diner there, uh, of course, with the burger and all this, and uh, then, you know, then kind of getting revenge on him and uh, <laughs> running out and then, you know, driving off laughing and uh, just all the bits, you know, from there, the road trip, uh, where they pick up uh, these hitchhikers and uh, obviously mental as well and just all of these sequences you know the montages throughout the entire film as well we have them on the road uh, it's just perfection it really is the use of music it's kind of epic adventurous uh, feel good and uh, spiritual as well at times as i said just um when harry and lloyd kind of separate there and uh, then uh, you know and the kind of use of music there and the framing it's just perfection and uh, then shortly after that though they kind of get back together and uh, they go you know all the way to Aspen, obviously, um, and that's when things start to get really cold for them, and uh, you know, kind of on that uh, kind of uh, moped there, and uh, they're kind of driving, and uh, when they arrive in Aspen, uh, you know, they're shivering, and uh, just, <laughs> just their faces, and uh, you know, the kind of um, Harry is stuck to Lloyd um, for that moment as well, you know, because of what, what's happened on the road, and uh, just yeah, I think when they arrive in Aspen, and uh, things start to escalate with the kind of the briefcase, uh, you know, they kind of get the money and it all kind of goes from there into the final act. Uh, this is just um, something else and uh, I think the montages with uh, Mary as well and, and, and Harry, um, you know, is one of my favourites and, uh, you know, just um, <laughs> Harry kind of um, throws the snowball, you know, at Mary and uh, then they kind of, kind of runs after her and all this. It's one of my uh, favourite moments of the film as well and uh, just the whole kind of 
way in which uh, in that moment Harry's lied uh, to Lloyd and uh, Lloyd is waiting at the bar and they have up and down moments throughout the film uh, but deep down they are best friends and uh, in the end that kind of highlights that it's back to kind of them being on the road together and uh, going back to the roots of the characters just kind of walking sense of hope there and wonder um, but you know back going back to kind of uh, playing it and uh, you know kind of uh, <laughs> Harry's uh, reaction there you know shouting Lloyd uh, you know all this and it just that's it that's the final moments there the final um, kind of shot and uh, you know it's just you know, throughout this film, uh, the chemistry uh, between these two is just, as I say, one of the best in cinema history. Just all of the supporting characters in this film as well, uh, it's just absolutely flawless, the entire cast here, and, uh, you know, Nicholas uh, as the kind of quirky villain, and uh, just, uh, as well, Mike Starr, uh, you know, as mental, and uh, Lauren Holly as uh, Mary as well, you know, I think was great in this film, and uh, just the uh, kind of uh, relationship, especially she has uh, between the two uh, main characters, uh, you know, it just uh, kind of brings out uh, you know, this is kind of a feeling in, in Harry and Lloyd and uh, kind of they get at each other through uh, Mary really and uh, you know in the end though once she's out of the picture it's kind of back to them, you know, it's kind of um, together again and going, going on, on the road and uh, but I love um, how Mary kind of uh, comes into their lives, uh, both of them uh, and just the way in which as well, you know, um, you know, kind of Harry, uh, you know, first is meant to kind of introduce Lloyd and uh, then he gets talking and uh, then he actually goes on dates, uh, you know, in a sense with uh, <laughs> Uh, Mary and the scene when Mary and, and Harry are kind of at the slopes. Uh, it's one of the funniest as well. You know, just the way it's just a uh, look frost and he licks um, you know, that kind of thing there, and just you know, his tongue gets stuck um, to the frost. And uh, you know, Lauren Holly playing this so perfectly here. You know, the kind of reactions, <laughs> just the way that she tries to help uh, Harry, and uh, it's just so warm, so charming. It's just one of my favourite endings to a comedy film ever. And uh, you know, I think just from start to finish, like this is one of the funniest films I've ever seen. And uh, you know, I think. Just, you know, I laugh so much that my jaw and my head, you know, kind of hurts. And just at the same time, uh, it's this warm comfort return uh, film uh, that I just get so uplifted by, so inspired by, and, uh, you know, just perfection from start to finish this film. With the tone, the way it's set up, the introduction of the characters, the way the tone is um, kind of uh, controlled throughout the entire film, not just by the Farrelly's, uh, through the writing and directing, the editing as well, um, the use of music and uh, just the structure of the film. But also, I think, from, uh, you know, Jim Carrey, and Jeff Daniels and you know the entire cast uh, their reactions as well to the two of them uh, you know is, is key and uh, but I think you know Jim Carrey Jeff Daniels and the Farrelly's the way they're all kind of in tune with each other uh, even with the ad lib moments and uh, the combination of all these different kind of elements of comedy and uh, just um, this being the first the debut of the Farrelly's uh, feature film I think that's something else and it is just uh, one of the most special comedies for me and uh, you know I think as I say Road to Perfection uh, you know one of my favorite kind of pairings in cinema history and uh, you know just one of the funniest films and uh, one of the most just epic you know uh, comedies that I've seen it gives me the shivers you know kind of uh, when different pieces of music come in and uh, we've got these montages and uh, just uh, various moments you know physical comedy that's just some of the best uh, really for me in cinema history. And a cool thing to mention as well is, is the names of the characters Harry and Lloyd um, it could be perhaps who knows a kind of tribute reference uh, to Howard Lloyd obviously you know so yeah that's quite cool uh, just to kind of uh, mention that you know who knows uh, it's cool to cool to think about regardless of uh, that was the intention there uh, but yeah that's just a cool little thing there's loads of different things in this film uh, you know kind of um, small details uh, that you can pick up on uh, after many different watches you know, it's fun because there are just many different things you know in this film that you can kind of pick up on and or just think about you know in a certain way and uh, you know kind of think uh, that's quite interesting and you know that sense of wonder and uh, yeah I think this film has just got so much packed into this so yeah this is among my favorite films of all time and uh, one of my favorite comedies and uh, you know I think it's going to get a very high score uh, because my rating for this film is 100% plus tier 3 um, so yeah extremely high score for me this gets into the plus tiers because uh, it is one of my all-time favorite films and uh, one of my absolute favorite comedies and uh, I just love this film from start to finish uh, you know a lot of the characters, the kind of use of music, the epic journey that we go on, and uh, just all the characters in this film, not just uh, Harry and Lloyd, um, and just the interactions, the relationships, everything that happens, you know, the way the narrative progresses, and uh, act one, two, and three, you know, it's got this kind of, uh, you know, amazing flow to the film, and, uh, you know, it's all kind of, um, there are differences, uh, even though the things that are kind of just set up in the first act kind of remain really uh, the same, uh, you know, as we end the film, that's one of the great things, you know, about these two characters, um, you know, kind of, they've gone through all this stuff. Uh, their, their friendship is stronger, you know, you could say in the end, uh, you know, and things, you know, kind of have happened to them and, uh, you know, they've realized perhaps different things, um, but, you know, in a sense, they haven't, they've not really learned anything, uh, you know, as, as the film ends. And, uh, you know, I think that's one of the great things about this. Uh, they kind of stay the same in many ways uh, from, how they started out, you know, they're kind of um, not really any 
uh, you know, more uh, kind of um, aware of anything. And uh, in the end, yeah, just going back to the kind of them teasing each other, playing it, um, just kind of shows that they are, you know, in many ways still the same and uh, they've not really been changed at all by this. They've kind of just gone through this uh, whole experience and not really, um, <laughs> in a way, been affected by it um, in a certain way. Uh, and obviously they have in other ways. So it's really cool um, to kind of uh, note that. And, uh, you know, I just think, it's, it's complex, this film, but it's so simple in the way it's told. And, uh, you know, I think just it's a pure comedy and uh, also such an investing uh, kind of narrative and, uh, you know, a plot that is kind of interwoven in this film and all the characters and all the, the setup and the way things escalate and, and culminate in the end. For me, it is a flawless masterpiece and, uh, you know, one of my favourite films of all time. Uh, so, yes, that's my thoughts on this film. What do you think? It'd be great to hear in the comments. It'd be real treat to kind of talk about this film and actually share your experience with this film and uh, talk about the Farrelly brothers and uh, you know all these different uh, you know kind of films and it will be this month as well talking about me myself and Irene which is behind me and uh, of course another Farrelly brothers film that I absolutely love and uh, yeah cannot wait to discuss that film on the channel as well but for now let's discuss this film Dumb and Dumber and all things cinema in the comments so yes as always take care and thanks for watching